Okay, we got the recording going, we're all set. Okay, we'll start the meeting off and we'll start with the, uh, the previous minutes. Everybody had an opportunity to look at them. Any uh, additions, deletions, changes you'd like to make? I'll look for a motion. I make a motion to accept the meetings. And it's nice. All in favor? Aye. 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 So pass, thank you. Okay, Tim. Uh, did you say John was going to be on first? Or yep, we're going to go ahead. through our digital channel report. Just looking at the agenda, I'm hoping maybe to um, get through the digital channel reports, you know, within 30 minutes. So um, uh, we'll go with that. So John, why don't you tell us what the latest is with uh, Instagram, please? All right. Um, so there's there's not too much new since last time. Um, we're up to um, 80, 82 followers, so we're getting close to 100. Um, and uh, I mean, all the followers followers so far have all been natural. So they've all been people that have found the account through the uh, through the hashtags or through um, being tagged in posts. Um, so that's the, that's a great way to have the account growing. Is um, all natural through people that are actually like our our target market. Um, but other than that, I've I've had no new posts go up. Um, just kind of seeing the um, the followers grow and I kind of I kind of like the way it's it's looking to to be growing so far that's kind of all I really have since last time hey John is, is there a way that um, I think we'll hear, hear Brenna and Chandler speak about it because we had uh, we've met a couple of times since our last official meeting just talking about LinkedIn but is there a way that we can identify uh, Instagram? followers in the Wallingford market, certainly in the Wallingford business community, and then ask them to follow us? Um, the only the thing I can think of is that we can find like small businesses that are in Wallingford. Like um, when, when I first started the account, that's what I was doing. I was, I was following um, small, small businesses that were in Wallingford to kind of get put the account on their radar. And then from there, once they follow, then it gets put on other people in Wallingford's radar. Um, within like the same market, um, so that's kind of where all all the all the followers have been coming from so far, um, starting with like the the small businesses and the the business market, and then kind of expanding from there. So I'm not sure I totally understood your answer, but so we we can be more aggressive with that, or is it just um, not something? Yeah, that's the, the the hardest part would be would be finding them. But if I were to just search up Wallingford, then there there would be um, I'm sure that there would be more small businesses and people within that within that market that would come up. That's something you'd suggest or recommend we do. Yeah, I mean to to keep like growing in that area, I guess would would be a good idea. So when, when you search, do you search with like Wallingford as the as the keyword? And search, yeah, and then from there it would be like small businesses that would come up. I'm sure that there would just be some people that have Wallingford in their in their bio on Instagram that would come up. And then from there I can kind of sort through and see which would be valuable and which wouldn't. Okay. So just quickly describe what kind of a, a relationship would not be valuable. Um, I guess just I don't know. I guess like a, a person that just has Wallingford in their bio, but might not be anything related to business. Like say there's like a, a kid that um, has like Wallingford in his bio. Okay. Um, that's that, that's not really the target market. There wouldn't be really anything, anything valuable there. Okay. And you'd be able to recognize that by their profile. Yeah. Is that it? Okay. Yep. All right. I would submit that, you know, it's not just businesses, it's Wallingford residents. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. As we, as we always say, economic development is not a department, it's an initiative, it's a mindset. Mm -hmm. The more people that we get that live in town that are thinking about it, there's yep. about to be benefits, so. Yeah, so uh, it would be more like towards the side where it, where it could be business related rather than kind of um, like students or kids that might have less of an impact. Right. Um, so, John, is that an that, uh, assignment you can take on yeah. between now and next meeting? Sure. So, uh, I, I appreciate that the um, the natural growth or the organic growth of the list thus far is what it is, but, uh, and I truly understand that we need to get more messaging and more consistent messaging, but 
are people inclined to take and follow because we've asked them to, even though there's, even if it's not, there's not a message attached other than, you know? Um, I think, I think it's, it's kind of just, they'll, if they see the account and they see that it's already established and there's already posts up, which there are, um, it makes them more inclined to follow than um, when it was first started, where there was no posts and it was kind of just um, trying to, to build up. I th think it's definitely in a better spot now where they don't really need something attached to, to follow. Okay, great. That would be my inclination as well. All right. So you'll take that on for next time. And yep. I would hope that maybe by next time we meet, um, you know, maybe we could almost double what we have now, right? Yeah. But would you say we have now 80? 82. 82. Okay. Okay. Very good. Any other questions or comments for John from anybody? Okay, sounds great. All right, um, uh, Chandler, you want to give us a LinkedIn update, please? Sure. So um, our last couple posts, we have averaged about a three percent like click through rate. So seven people have clicked on the PPP loan post that we did. And so that means that seven people are potentially getting their, their business some some financial aid that they need. Um, then uh, we gained four new followers and we also had four people click on the visit website button on the LinkedIn page. So that's pretty good. And if you average that with the people who visited the page, it's about an 8% uh, conversion on like the people who come, but it said that 21% of those people were unique users, meaning that like Tim Ryan visited, he visited twice. That's why it's at 48 visitors, but 21 users. And so um, if you average the click through rate through that, that's a 19% return on the visitors per, I guess, click. <laughs> All right. And um, again, I think we're tiptoeing with we we're obviously looking for more traffic, but we have to get more consistent with with messaging. So um, just for everyone's edification, Chandler and um, Brent and I uh, spoke a couple of times in between meetings about audience development. And uh, so, Brent, I'll turn it over to you in terms of the audience development side. Yeah, so we had been focusing a lot on brokers uh, just in the New England as well as like the tri-state area. Um, but we have decided to switch routes a little bit with that. Uh, Tim was able to meet and talk with, what was it, like one of the directors of like LinkedIn sales. Right. Um, and he suggested that we focus more on building a local base before reaching out because a local base will give us a lot more validity in the like brokerage sphere. So we're now turning our attention on finding Wallingford businesses um, and following them and getting them to follow us back. Um, we actually have a database that we can use that tells us all like the businesses in Wallingford. And I'm going to go through that and then uh, try to find the people who work for that business who would be uh, like decision makers and then invite them to follow us on LinkedIn. Very good. And we have, what's it, 179 followers now, Brad? Oh, that's about a terrible that, yeah. question. Yeah, um, it's about that. I yeah. think you're right on the money though. I, I would hope that again, um, since John's going to double his, I would hope we could probably double that by the time, next time we meet, once we get started with that local initiative. Yeah, I, I think the local initiative is going to be like a big increase in sending out invites. Um, right now, I think we've only sent out somewhere around like 50 invites using Sales Navigator. With the local businesses, we'll, it'll be fairly easy to curate a larger list of leads that we can then go and invite, and that should result in a higher amount of people following us. Very good. Anthony, I, I don't know if you are, um, are you, Anthony, can I call on you for a minute? All right, I know he has his, his Monday morning check-in at the eight, he may still be in that, but 
Um, just for everybody's edification, we um, were fortunate enough to meet with a, um, a director of global sales for LinkedIn who happens to live in Wallingford, Connecticut. It was complete happenstance that we kind of came across this fellow. It was somebody who called the Economic Development Office in pursuit of a uh, piece of commercial real estate, uh, which is a total aside from his LinkedIn responsibilities. And uh, when I got back to him, his voicemail said, this is Anthony Lapia from LinkedIn. And so that had me, uh, next time I spoke with him, when we finally connected, we got our business out of the way. And then I said, what exactly do you do for LinkedIn? And uh, boy, what a, what a great resource. So Anthony and I met with him last week and um, uh, he is a treasure trove of, of knowledge and he's willing to engage. Um, so I had uh, called Professor Tomczyk last week and, and had a conversation with him. And um, I actually think it would be great for everybody um, if we could get Anthony Lapia to uh, address this group. Uh, I think you will learn I mean, this guy's not just LinkedIn. He is a social or a digital media expert. Um, he is um, about to get promoted. Uh, I think he said June or July 1st. I don't know if Anthony remembers, but um, to even a larger role in, in a LinkedIn hierarchy. So, uh, but he, he was just one very, very impressive person. And um, so anyway, uh, David, you and I are gonna continue to work on some uh, means of having him address this entire group. I'd love to be able to do it in person, but that that may not happen that way just because of protocols on the, at the university and uh, perhaps other places. But anyway, so that had us redirect. So Brenna, thank you for redirecting as quickly as you did. And um, um, you, you'll continue to, and this this frankly happened late last week. I think Brenna, you and I spoke on Friday or Thursday. Yeah. So uh, we'll get we'll give Brenna some running room and uh, we'll look for some um, you know, good audience growth in the LinkedIn channel between now and the next time we, we meet collectively. Anything else to add to that, Brenna? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Terrific. Terrific. All right, Callum, you had some, uh, some, uh, things to some deliverables, if you will, you want to take it away? Sure. Yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen to show the changes. So based on the last time we met, we had spoken about removing the section which had the image slider of the front of the locations of the four businesses we were using for testimonials. And then we had also talked about adding a grid for, for logos and then also adding logos to the existing testimonial slider section. So uh, Tim and I spoke uh, over the last week and so we're, I've added four logos already, just showing how it could be done um, here. And then uh, either through us figuring out how to use the um, website editor tool that uh, Web Solutions provides, or through going through Web Solutions, um, this is something that could be expanded to have more rows of companies in the future. I know Tim had said that eventually he said that um, there could be as many as, as uh, you know, 20 logos here, but for the time being, this is just showing how it could be could be expanded upon. Um, this is also the section where the images are right now. So on the current website, this is just a slider of images showing the front of these business locations. So we're getting rid of that uh, completely. Um, so the next, the last change also is just the addition of the company logos in the testimonial section. Uh, just to further kind of reiterate that association between the, the business and um, this testimonial. Questions for Callum? Hey, Callum. They cleaned it up really nice, Callum. I, uh, great effort there. Wonderful effort. Thank you. Callum, if you could scroll back up to the, uh, I don't know what you call that, yeah, where the logos are. So, my inclination is to, you know, use this, you know, when you're in the public space, it's always going to be the person who looks at the website once in a great while and says, Hey, how come my logo is not up there? So, um, my inclination is to take and, and, you know, really populate this with a lot of logos. I mean, could be 10, 15, you know, of the major companies we will have to come up with 
some justifiable criteria is is why we don't have you know a small coffee shop logo you know maybe it's by employee count maybe it's you know something that we'll come up with to justify but um so how many how would that look i mean is this is would this be something that would rotate through logos or is it this box and the logos get smaller with more in them so uh i i had built this with the idea that you could add more rows to it and you could also add more and make make it a five or six wide grid if you wanted to um i i would recommend though um i certainly i mean by most like web conventions you wouldn't want more than um depending on how wide the grid was maybe 12 logos just because i mean if, if the purpose of this section is just to build credibility and build an association with people so that they see a logo they recognize and um feel a connection to that or uh feel as if it's adding some sort of social proof um you we really don't want to go overboard here because I, I don't i think that just adding more um could have, I mean, could just complicate and uh, I guess distract from other information we're trying to get across. But um, I, I think also definitely the the list of what that criteria might be to meet this list. Um, you, you know, I, I think there might be a lot more companies that fit fit a very strict criteria than we might imagine. And so we might just want to pick companies that best fit whatever um, strategic purpose the section has on the website and make it more about what um, the logos do for helping the website get across uh, those purposes. Does that make sense? Excellent point. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that they're all black and white and that they're all exactly the same size. And I hope that we continue with that same format. Yeah, I, I agree with keeping it as limited as possible. I personally wouldn't go certainly more than 12 and I was thinking more like six or eight. Um, and if you can rotate them through, um, you don't have to change all six, eight or 10 or whatever number we come up with at one time, you know, you can look to drop off century and add someone and leave the other three then drop off hops. And you, you see what I'm saying? As you go along. Sure. Um, they don't have to drop off hops. Yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> I should have said radio. I, uh, <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> uh, do, do you see what I'm saying? I, I I think that this, as he said, this leads credence to the message that we're making. Um, it is not the message. Um, so um, I think that as many as we can that are um, as well known as possible in the world of business, I think that as these four that you have here, um, I think you're... <laughs> I think we're better served by that. Could you put a, if, if somebody wanted to see who else was in town, I mean, could you um, kind of make that business as they call only for home, uh, a, a link to a landing page that show you um, just a very simple list of who's in town. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can add a link um, on here, but, I mean, this is just a, a static image, really. It's just for the purposes of showing off what it could look like. Yeah. Um, and at, at the end of the day, that would be that would be talking about adding an entirely new page and yeah. populating that with information um, that I don't have. But uh, you know, certainly, I think if that's something that you know, well, if you think it would, uh, I don't know, Tim. Do you think that would add value? You know, people want to know kind of who's here. You got some big names. Yeah, so um, not to get off subject, but uh, the committee has heard for years, you know, me um, kind of complaining to the Secretary of State's office in the state of Connecticut that they are the single repository of every single business uh, in the state because every business has to get a tax ID. And believe it or not, municipalities in many businesses can start a municipality without every telling us they're here, but the Secretary of State's office has all the information. So we finally have a document um, that was pulled, called together by the Connecticut Data Collaborative. This is five years of, of screaming for the economic development community. We finally have a document. So my point is, Anthony, so we have to have a document that lists all the businesses. Well, what we got is a document put together by data folks, not by marketing folks. So it is like the most cumbersome Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But That's the bottom not... line is, 
you know, for my purposes and business growth purposes, um, you know, we can certainly go through it. Is it presentable in that format? Not at all. So then we'd have to massage that, um, change it. So any we we can we can talk about it, but it's a it's a heavy lift. Um, yeah, yeah. But I understand the concept, and I, I totally support the concept. I mean, it it sounds so simple. But let's just put a list of all of our businesses. But it has to be something that breathes because businesses fall off, businesses come on. Yeah. It's, gotta, it's gotta be something that in order for it to have any credibility has to be up to date. So we, we can give some thought to that for sure. But I, I certainly like the concept a lot. Tim, is there, is there, this is Gary, is there a way to, to have the logo show up based on some type of participation or joining in to the, you know, the EDC site or contributing or, you know, participating or volunteering or anything in that regard, some type of incentive program that, you know, drives people towards it. Cause let's face it, it is free advertising. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a way to maybe get people to participate more by having their logo up there. Um, may drive more people to the site. Yep, good thought, good thought. Yeah, I think Callum, your, your, your comments I think are, are, are spot on in terms of, uh, you know, there needs to be a purpose uh, build um, you know, I like, I like this term social proof. You've used that a couple of times in conversation and I like that, but, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, we come up with, um, that, that group that starts. So let's say for the, just so give me a visual, cause I'm a visual guy. Let's say we have four logos like this and we have three ribbons, right? So maybe we have 12 and they rotate every time someone clicks, does it start in the same place so that the people on the third ribbon really never get seen or can you make that <laughs> too? Uh, I mean, honestly, that's something that would be a development decision. That's not in my control in the slightest, but I, I think if you wanted to, you could probably ask Web Solutions to make it in a way that randomized what slide was shown first. And as, Ant or as uh, Cal mentioned earlier, um, uh, we are in the process of trying to determine whether we as the client of Web Solutions, they give us some um, abilities to take and go in and make some changes to our site. We're trying to figure out um, whether we have the ability to make these changes or not. Uh, Web Solution has given us a price to change them already, uh, which um, I'd hate to spend the money if we can uh, have Callum do it, <laughs> to put it bluntly. Um, so anyway, we'll, uh, we'll figure that out. We should be able to figure that out today, actually. So. All right, Callum, anything else? Uh, those were the changes. Yeah, that's all. Tim, right. be, before we go on to the next presentation, um, I'm wondering if we should uh, contact Joe and Gary's online right now and maybe <clears throat> run that business list by Gary's group because he may have some had some familiarity with them already and he may be able to help us call through that list a little bit easier. You know, many hands make light work type thing. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to certainly put that on Gary or do anything without Joe knowing about it. So maybe you can make that presentation and we can get a see where it'll go. Yeah, it's not a bad idea, uh, Mark. I, I think, you know, the, the idea of retentions and incentives, that, you know, getting these people to participate more and knowing what's available and so forth, um, driving people towards that website, um, whether we have incentives for it or not, uh, we should have access to businesses that we know that are you know movers and shakers that maybe we can get on here um and you know go out and kind of just publicize it more that hey look at we've done all these changes yep Harry, do you want me to put that on an, a, a as an agenda item on a yep I'll come in. yeah that'd be fine okay thanks gary uh sam you want to give us a traffic update uh, so just a refresher, last time we talked, um, the last 30 days of information we had, the drop-off rate was 83% and the through traffic was only 16%, and, but we did have four uh, contact clicks. So four people clicked on the correct phone number. Damn, I can't hear you very well and I've just turned my volume up. Is there any way you can help me with that? How about now? All right, give it a shot. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. That's better, yeah. Um, sorry about that. So, Maybe you can start again because I missed most of what you were saying there. 
Yep. So the um, last time we talked, 30 days before then, the last 30 days of web traffic, we had 83% of a drop off rate, which um, we had already discussed. And that was an increase from the 30 days before we had made any changes. <clears throat> and since then, these most recent 30 days, we've decreased that drop off rate to 78.7%. Um, but we've only had two telephone clicks, which is again, a limited statistic comparatively because the last time we talked, it was a little bit higher. It was at four, which is favorable, but there's not really many conclusions we can draw from these numbers until we um, are consistently messaging with a call to action on our social channels. So once we see, um, like we should see more relevant statistics and more informative data once social channels are driving traffic to the page. And um, on that note, what I do wanna say is, I was just looking really quick, Instagram is still not um, linking to the landing page in the, in the profile. Um, I don't know if you were gonna use Linktree or just use the landing page at all. Um, but right now it's back to that, uh, I think it was like a news article. And then the other thing I wanted to add is, Shay, are you using Constant Contact? Um, MailChimp. Okay, so pretty much uh, they're similar enough. So what I was gonna say is I'm looking on the webpage right now or the landing page and we don't have anywhere that allows someone to like sign up for the landing page or sign up for the email list. Uh, and that's an easy thing to integrate and even to do something like that and link to that on the Instagram link tree. So have that be an option because I was thinking, I was like, I'm not signed up for the email list and I wanted to figure out how I could. Um, and that would be a good thing to put on the landing page. That's a good idea. Very good idea. There's a lot there, Sam. So let me back you up there. So let's start with LinkedIn. So Help me again understand. So there's there's not take me there again, please. LinkedIn is fine. LinkedIn is doing um, great there. But like I said, the um, the messaging that we're doing hasn't been uh, designed to drive people to the website or to the landing page that we created. So the data that I'm presenting, which is the 78.7% drop off rate and 21.3% through traffic. That's great, but that we aren't gonna see any improvements until we start um, putting a marketing strategy behind that, which would be to reach out via social channels. Okay, but something I th th thought I heard you say, uh, something was not connected Something was not driving people to the to the website. Right? Oh, uh, Linktree, that's on Instagram. So Linktree is um, a platform. I think Shay said she was using it already too. So you could just share that and put that on the um, Instagram bio. But on the Instagram profile right now, there's one section that lets you add a website link and it would be really good for the landing page to, um, and, and just the initiative altogether to have the landing page linked in that spot, but right now it's it's a news article from a third party website. So linking to that is also favorable because it shows like credibility in the town and everything and kind of updating the people what's going on. So you should definitely link to both of those. And there's a way to do that, which is Linktree. But right now the landing page is just non-existent on Instagram. I think I sent um, the Linktree to you, John, I think last week. Yeah. So. I like I I just added it in, so it's it's in there right now. Okay, I was just making sure you got it. Yeah, and so other than that. Um, All right. So for those of us who don't quite uh, follow this as quickly as you guys do, so um, Sam, what you're saying is that uh, using Linktree, and John is a is a matter of protocol and a go forward. Every message we send out now will have a direct link back to our web page, which prior to today that did not happen is that accurate so what i had been doing was just having like the link um for the article that was connected to the post be the link that was on the instagram but now i can add that as like a, a um a title on on link tree and then um it'll be one of the options that the people can can press on once once they press on the link tree all right so that's an improvement right yep that, that addresses one of your observations sam right yeah, and 
once the messaging kind of gets people to click on those links and hopefully go to the landing page, then that's when you'll see more informative statistics on this end. Great. And then there was another a point that was similar. So there was the Instagram and then there was another. Um, the email list comment I had, I actually just found that because <clears throat> I wanted to see if the link tree was being used on the email marketing campaign. And I knew it was, but I didn't have a way of like signing up for it anywhere. Um, so I figured that would be a good thing to add on the website at least. And as a link on the link tree that you're using in the Instagram bio, because you could say, in one post, like sign up for our weekly newsletter, our bi-weekly newsletter, and they'll have the link in the bio as well as the landing page. But that's an easy, I mean, especially if you're using, what was it, MailChimp, that's like an easy thing to embed. So if you just ask Web Solutions that one, they'll put that in mm -hmm. the footer. So that's a great a little segue, um, but I'm not, I'm not cutting you off, Sam, but so Shay, with your familiarity with MailChimp, so for, again, for everybody's information, MailChimp is a, is the tool, but it is really utilizing um, email lists that we built in the department. And we, we use literally Excel spreadsheets to build it off of. And so it's a self-built, uh, pretty archaic methodology for putting together a, a, a user list. Um, and we've got it separated by business category. So we've got, you know, commercial brokers in one category. So for example, when, when I get a hold of Shay and say, all right, send out this message, then I say, okay. Um, and the categories are, we have a manufacturing category, we have a real estate uh, brokerage developer category, we have a government category, we have a vendor category, um, a media category, and a category for economic development professionals. So we've got all those categorically listed on these separate spreadsheets. So. When we're sending something out, I say to Shay, okay, send it to the following code categories. All right, so Shay, based on what Sam is saying, it sounds like we invite everybody to join through the uh, MailChimp. All right, so, um, and I understand the audience development piece, but how does that interact with what we have now? Um, so I think, well, if we wouldn't be sending that invite through the email marketing because those people are already signed up. So we would send it, we would have it on our landing page, like Sam said, have it on our Instagram and have it on our LinkedIn. Um, I was just looking on MailChimp and they actually have like a section called like sign up forms and you can like create a link um, so people can sign up and you can get more subscribers. Um, so I could set that up and then hopefully I'd be able to send it um, to like Chandler and John and they could put it on the Instagram and LinkedIn, um, and then we can put it on the landing page too. So um, I guess what I envision right now, what we have right now is a very structured list, good or bad, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in love with it, trust me, but good or bad, we have a very structured list separated by category. So for example, when I send out those, when we sent out those um, updates from the SBA about you know, PPP, the, the new you know uh, criteria for PPP. Well, I didn't bother sending it to you know government people. I didn't bother sending it to other economic development people. They already know about it. And and what I so what I don't want to do is is our my thought is that if we build this random huge repository of emails, then we can no longer control what goes to who, and we're all recipients of emails. And I'll tell you when I get emails from people that are just too frequent, I don't even read them, I just delete them. So uh, I'm afraid that we would dilute the effectiveness of the, you know, the specificity of a channel. Help me help me work through that. Um, I agree um, with that. But I think that if we have somebody who's like, interested enough to be signing up for our email list, that we should definitely be in contact with them. Um, so I think that when people are signing up, it'll put them into their own grouping, I'm assuming. So it would be like subscribers that signed up and that would be their own group. Um, so that's them like willingly wanting to see our emails. So I don't think that they would be ever be like annoyed by our emails or never want to see them because they're the ones who are signing up. Um, so I think that with every message that we have, 
we could send it to them, um, regardless of what they kind of, what, who they are, or what they want to see. Um, if they're signing up for our email list, they're going to see our emails. I'm wondering if you said there was like a, like a form for subscribers to fill out. I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you've looked at that form yet. Do you think there's a place on that form where you could say like, which of these categories do you think you fall into list the categories you have? And then you could self like insert them into one of the categories. I don't know if that's an option to keep everything categorized. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I haven't looked into how to build it, but I definitely would be able to do that if it allows me to. Yeah, I would just do like business. Are you a business owner or are you a resident of Wallingford or are you interested in learning more about either of those two things? And then they get put into those categories and that kind of controls the messaging. Keep it simple, right? All right. Other discussion. All right, so Sam, just back to you. So what are we adding and where so that people will have the ability to add, uh, get into our email list? Um, well, once we create the form, which I think would have to take place on MailChimp, so I guess that would be Shay. Um, once that form is created, there should be a shareable link that you can add to the link tree <clears throat> and that will go, um, in the Instagram bio. Um, so John can create posts that say like, sign up for our email list link in the bio. And same thing with Facebook once that's up and running and um, LinkedIn as well. So LinkedIn is already going. I mean, once you get that shareable link, you can just create posts however frequently that say, if you haven't seen this, sign up for our email list. Um, and same thing in the bio. So there's a lot of opportunities, but I guess once you just create that MailChimp form, um, but the, I guess, most pressing one would just be to integrate that onto the landing page at the footer. I was just looking on MailChimp and you can actually put like a pop-up um, picture, so, or not picture, but display. So when they clicked on the website that it would pop up and say, subscribe to our email list. I don't know if that's something that we would wanna do. Um, yeah, I don't know, Callum, what's that design-wise is that? gonna like deter people from wanting to scroll if the email list is like first to pop up no i think that's um that's pretty normal and you can i mean i don't know what MailChimp offers but also usually there's like a full screen option and then also a uh, a small window pop-up option so it doesn't need to be something that's necessarily like very obtrusive yeah i think it's just like a small from what it looks like it's just a small um you can still see the background of the page behind the pop-up. Yeah, so something like that. Excellent. All right, Shay, you've got that? Yeah. Assignment? <laughs> yep. Okay. Sam, great report. Anything else? I don't think so, I think that's it. Great observations. All right, Shay, um, you may have just given your report, but anything else to add to the discussion we've had? Um, not a lot. Um, so I think we sent out two messages from the last time I saw each other and um, the click rates have actually been down. Um, so I'm not sure whether that's because of what we're sending um, or just like the time. Um, I kind of looked into it. So I think that um, the time when we first we get the most click, we get the most clicks on the email um, when initially right when we send it. So if we send an email at 10, we get like 10 clicks right at 10 and then it kind of goes down. Um, so we kind of had more success sending them out later in the day, which I know that might sound weird, but we did a lot better when we sent them out at around two or three. Um, so I might try to send them around then more and see if that helps. Um, I'm also, um, gonna try to work on the subjects more and maybe make them more tempting people to click on them more um so hopefully that will bring them up but these are the only these were probably like the lowest that we've had um i'll just like read off it like for example on the 
PPP loan deadline extended, we got 28 out of 118, which isn't that bad. Oh, that's opens, um, but definitely want to get that number up. And then for manufacturing PPP loan deadline extended, we only got 12 opens out of 91. Um, so we're not even really getting people to open the email, which is definitely the first step we have to take if we want people to um, be getting the information we want them to. Um, so kind of just working on getting people to actually open the email. And then um, I added to um, our email template the um, find out how to save 40% on your electric bill by calling. And then I put Tim's number. So I don't know if that's worked at all. I don't know if Tim has gotten any calls from that. But um, we added that to, for kind of like a call to action to actually call Tim. Um, and that was really it. I'm going, to, I'm going to go back to, um, you know, to audience development. I, I really think it's all about really trying to develop an audience. I'm not surprised by the open rates on the PPPs that you just shared um, because intuitively, you know, medium to large size manufacturers have been dealing with the PPP thing for, you know, nine months. Um, it's something that they deal directly with their financial people on, with their banks. You know, by the time we send it, they probably know about it. The better target audience for that is much smaller businesses. And we just don't have a good database for smaller businesses at this point. So again, I hate to keep going back to this, you know, uh, this additional position in our department, but that's a department position that's gonna focus on really building out, uh, you know, our, our local audience. And we now have that list from from the Secretary of State. So that, that's, that's, that's a month's worth of work, just taking and, and getting all these small businesses into a database so that we can reach out and, and, uh, and help them. So, and that's, Again, why in my mind, I keep thinking, you know, some type of division when we send out emails, uh, because, you know, there's those that are gonna be much more, you know, pertinent to small businesses than large. You know, large businesses have the sophistication. They've got the, they've got the resources. They know all about the PPP stuff. They get the same initial emails from SBA that I do, but I don't have a way to, you know, segment them from the smaller businesses at this point. So it's, um, you know, it's all about developing the audience and, and being strategic about how we build those lists. So. All right, very good. Thank you, Shay. I didn't leave anybody out, did I think? Uh, you know, Brent, I know we didn't talk about the college outreach, but that's that's kind of that's kind of on pause right now, is it? Yeah, not? that's pretty much, I haven't really done any work on it. I've reached out unfortunately there wasn't a lot that happened with community colleges which was like our next step after contacting a lot of the major universities in the area uh i reached out to like five community colleges um i sent like follow-ups and stuff and i never heard back from anybody so there's really no development going on there and i, I really i think that again that's 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 market driven i mean the idea for us to take and, and connect businesses with the placement offices at colleges, I think is a sound idea. I think what we're, what we're seeing is that those placement offices, they've got a, such a high placement rate. I'm talking about 95 plus percent placement rates coming out of the, uh, the placement offices because right now, although you know, the, the, uh, the data that uh, you know, we, we see in the media does not suggest this is the case, but you know, employers are struggling to find people. And uh, when you've got, you know, uh, so anyway, these people that are looking for work, <laughs> there's a bunch of opportunity. There really is. So these placement offices are, you know, they're jammed up. So maybe they just don't need the additional connection. Um, the businesses, however, makes you say, geez, why would they want to? But what you're saying is the community college hasn't responded to us. So they're, they're kind of putting the brakes on from that side. So. Uh, and I would say that this is that's a, this is a nice to have, but in terms of us building out, you know, based on, on our very our very big beginning, uh, you know, mission vision values, you know, it's 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 you know kind of low on the totem pole. Yeah, I think when we're better connected with businesses through our other outreach programs with like LinkedIn, um, Instagram with the small businesses, I think it'll be a lot easier to reach out to the colleges and be like, hey, check out these platforms we have. 
let us know if there's anything you want us to like say on your behalf or anything we can help you with. I think that'll be a lot easier strategy than reaching out while we're still creating those platforms. Great. All right, anything else to report on the, any specific channels? All right, a number of you have respective uh, assignments, so I thank you very much for that. Um, Mark, can we uh, move on to the next uh, item on the agenda? Go for it, next one. So we had talked about um, doing a, a presentation for our town council. Um, we are on their agenda for May the 25th. So, um, uh, and we talked about doing uh, individual, you know, PowerPoint presentations and weaving that together. So I'm not sure who I should be looking to for direction at this point or input, but. Um, um, I think as much as they can of seeing the students, I think we're better off even if it's not all of the students, you know, just get a flavor of what we've been working with. But it, it, we have to know the time frame that the council is, has an appetite for allowing us to make the presentation. I, I, you know, they have a lot of, usually have a lot of other things. They may say, look, I'll do it, but we can only give you 10 minutes or 15 minutes or half hour, whatever, whatever that amount is. And then from that, uh, I think visuals are good, but if we can get some of the students to speak to the visuals, I think that's better. And um, they don't have to listen to me or Joe or you, I think. I mean, I think you or Joe should make the introduction, but no more than that. And then let the students take over, because I think uh, it, it'll be more meaningful for the, uh, the exercise that we're going through right now. No doubt. So what we have is we've got 25 minutes, or let me put it this way, what we've requested. So the way this works is the agenda for the May 25th meeting has not been you know, built yet. So you put a request in to be on the agenda and I'm, I've spoken to the town council. So I've kind of seated the request a little bit, if you will. I've spoken to the chairman. He says, all right, don't worry, we'll, we'll get it in. The one thing that could submarine this a little bit is that um, the municipal budget is to be heard on the two weeks before May and on May 11th. They only meet twice a month. If for some reason something goes awry on May 11th with the budget, it could be on the agenda on the 25th, which could, you know, squeeze us a little bit. But I've asked for um, 25 minutes on the 25th. I think when we met separately about doing uh, this via uh, a, um, uh, you know, a slide presentation, uh, we talked about having two presenters. Um, but we've talked about having, you know, visual could be a, you know, a headshot, a resume, uh, or bio rather, uh, bio and resume of, of everybody. So everybody gets some sort of physical exposure, uh, but um, having two people present, um, and then you would work within that 25 minute time frame. So, um, David, do you have anything to add to that by chance or? Uh just a couple of quick logistical type things. Um, so uh, Tim and I talked, we invited Brenna and Chandler to be the speakers for the presentation. They have said yes, which also means that they get to do the work of like assembling the separate slides and whatnot. So for the rest of you guys, if you could send slides or one or two slides uh, to them, showcasing you and anything that you would like them to pay attention to. So Callum, for example, your business, that would be absolutely awesome. And then uh, Tim and I will work with Chandler and Brenna to make the presentation as polished as possible. You guys are of course all invited to come and attend the meeting and to be there in the event that there's any Q and A's questions directly related to your area of expertise. Um, and then I think that that's pretty much it. Tim, did I miss anything? Um, I don't think so. So it's a possible, Mark, we haven't scheduled our next meeting yet, but maybe we can do so while everybody's on, on the call, but, um, and, and maybe we can have some sort of a, um, you know, a, a sample, uh, or, you know, a, a draft, a rough draft of the PowerPoint presentation and, and uh, for, for next meeting. Yeah, one thing I would say is I would hesitate to put any definitive 
like this is where we're at in like what we've done because it is still like two months away so we can have like the format of like we want this kind of information like this is our like conversion rate this is our click-through rate this is how many followers we have on each account but i would hesitate putting any numbers there until like maybe like a week before the presentation just so we have the most up-to-date information yeah and i don't even i don't even need know if you need definitive numbers at this stage of the game i think more of this is what our goal is for the town. This is what we're looking at. This is what we're expecting that will happen in the future. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't come up with a number that, you know, says we've had 38 clicks already or, you know, any of yeah. that. But, um, because you're always going to find somebody who will be amazed at it or disappointed at it. <laughs> so, right. So I, I couldn't agree with you more, Brenna. I, I, I think that let's, let's give them a view of where we want to be rather than where may, we may actually be at. I 100% I agree. Don't give them data to digest. Don't give them data to interpret. We've been on, we've been on a journey. So take them on the journey. And I always say, you know, I spend two minutes looking in the rearview mirror and the rest of my time looking forward. So, but what my, my two cents along with what Mark is saying is let's spend a little bit of time, albeit briefly, on the objectives as you know, we formulated this as to how we got to where we are, but this is what we built. I mean, Sam's report today was, was illustrative of how all these things tie together, right? I mean, it just all tie together. And so what you've built is you, you've built all these individual channels, but you're weaving them all together. Um, so that's when, when, and when, when I would encourage you with any presentation is to say to yourself, when I'm finished, what do I want my audience's takeaway to be? What, what impressions do I want to leave them with? And, and I would think we'd want to leave the, the Wallingford Town Council saying that the um, student marketing team um, has built a media plan for the town of Wallingford where we can reach out and engage our public. We, we have become, um, we, we will be engaging people beyond the state of Connecticut perhaps our opening comments before we introduce you folks, we, again, I agree with Mark, it will be very brief, would be to say what's, what's driving this right from the get-go is that Wallingford is that oasis that we had talked about, where state agencies are selling Wallingford as they go beyond our borders to sell the state, and the state has got some significant um, reputational issues when it comes to business development. So we're trying to, we're trying to circumvent or overcome not circumvent, but overcome those reputational issues by saying, but, but we're Wallingford, we're different. We have the lowest electric rates, not the highest in the country, which is the state of Connecticut, has the highest power cost in the entire continental United States. Wallingford has the lowest in Connecticut, and frankly, the lowest in New England. We have to overcome that. We have the lowest mill rate in the region. We, so we, we can sell ourselves, and we need to sell Wallingford not along with the state of Connecticut, because they're not going to sell us effectively, given their reputation. So that's the premise by which we've built this entire, you know, platform and these these variety of platforms. That that message has to come out in an early slide. I would just add to that, Tim. I think the most impressive thing about the entire project is none of this really existed ahead of this team coming together. You know, so. So the, the EDC, the town was not in a position to really market the way that they are now. And that's the real takeaway. And it's, it's, it's a foundation and it's, it's a very strong foundation to build upon. So um, from, from my perspective, that's the most impressive uh, piece of, of all that's happened. The rest are details. Excellent point. That give you guys some, uh, some idea of what we're looking to build here? Yep. Okay. Tim, when uh, when you actually do the agenda of how people are going to speak and what's going to be brought on, my suggestion is that you open it up with Joe, um, just making an introduction, uh, you know, a very brief introduction of why we went to this way, and then you you follow up once once everyone has done it, then you follow up at the end. Because in my mind, the close is the most important. Okay. 
Gotcha. Okay. So any more on the town council? We've got dates, we've got times. Um, I'd like to say with some level of confidence that that, that uh, is a lock, but you know, sometimes things happen. The beauty of what we're doing is that we have it in presentation form and if by chance we get bumped, um, then, you know, we can always regather re and, and do it at a later date, but let's hope we don't. With that in mind, why don't we just do a quick look at the calendar to see what's the best time to reconvene before the 25th. And in my mind, it, uh, Monday's fine. It's, it seemed to be Monday for everybody else. Speak up if not. So we've got the third, we got the 10th. Uh, so the week of the third is our finals week. Um, so, uh, from what I can tell, there are no Monday finals, but I would still hesitate to put anything on the calendar for that week. Um, that Monday is a study day. So yeah. there are no finals, but that is the day before finals actually start to hit. Oh, well, we don't want yeah. to do that. So the 10th, the 10th, um, so the 10th is actually, I think Chandler as well. And I don't know about anyone else, but it's the day I graduate. So that's my graduation day. Oh. Uh, so uh not really looking to wake up that early on that day as well as my family will be down here so i want to spend the time with them um i could do like any other day that week though because that's after classes are over so i would like wager a guess that people We're are more free. Yes, other days. Like... i'm i'm wide open so the 11th you want to do the 11th or that's okay. totally fine with me yeah is there anyone who can't do it the 11th at eight o'clock in the morning? That's So that's Tuesday, right? Can we do Wednesday? Yes, we can. Wednesday the 12th. Yeah. Let me just double check what time. I know I'm getting my first COVID vaccine on the 12th. Let me just make sure it's not a morning appointment. I don't think it is, but I do not remember. <clears throat> so I would just have to leave a little early. My My shot time is at like 9 45 so i would just have to leave around like nine but i could do like an 8 a.m that morning everybody else okay then for the 12th wednesday the 12th well but since brenna is one of the presenters i really don't i hate to see you leave the meeting earlier you want to do that i 13th? mean <laughs> yeah 13th is fine too <laughs> how about the 13th anyone cannot do it the 13th then if it's an if it's an 8 a.m start i'll have my you know, we, we huddle every day at eight, which is always the time that this meeting starts. So you'll lose me for 15, 10, 15. Okay. I, I can do 830. That works. Let's do 830. 830 on the 13th. 513 at 830. Mark, you sounded like an auctioneer there, but you got it done. <laughs> <laughs> all, bids, all bids are in and final, so. <laughs> all right, could you repeat the day? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. It'll be May 13th, which is a Thursday at 8.30, Sam. Okay. All right, all good. Okay, that took care of that. Uh, and then we're, we're, uh, we'll have a, we will have a, a dry run of the presentation at that point, right? Yeah. Looking forward to it, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Re-engaging the media mix. Yeah, the rest of the items on the agenda, um, the, the student marketing team is always welcome, but it is no need for you to stay. Um, so it's completely up to, up to you. If you drop off, we're not going to be sensitive about it. <laughs> okay. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck in f with your finals. Thank you. Yes, um, absolutely. Good luck. Sure, guys. Tim, I have a quick question about the PPP loans. My, I have another internship with a small business, and she was wondering if uh, sole proprietors could get it. The answer is yes. Okay. Yes. So a lot of the rules have changed. Uh, sole proprietors, for example, historically could not collect unemployment unless that sole proprietor was paying into the unemployment fund, which is extremely rare, most don't. Um, but now the rules are different and sole proprietors are entitled to unemployment. So yes, they can also apply for PPP. 
Um, yeah, a lot, a lot of the rules have changed. The best way to approach that, frankly, is through their bank, because the banks are the places, you know, the SBA is, is um, administering all these things, but if you think of a giant funnel, you know, you got the world coming down to the SBA shoulders and they just don't have the, the ability, as much as they've tooled up, they don't have the ability to handle the volume. So the banking community is, is taking it and, um, you know, handling most of the volume, doing all the pre, um, uh, pre-screening and, and guiding uh, their, their customers. So I would direct that person to their local bank. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. All right, Chandler. See ya. Wait, Thank you for everything. Have a great day. Thank you. Um, uh, do we have to be switched over for as host or? Uh, yeah, I'm switching him right now. Oh, okay. Oh, now we're still recording. We didn't want to lose us off at the same time. Um, okay. Yep. So, Mark, re-engaging the media mix, um, you know, I'm starting to have some thoughts. You know, things are, things are changing, all right? Everything, as we all know, um, the business community is, is, or the world is reawakening. Uh, you know, not, I'm not making an editorial comment about coming out of COVID at this point, but I think we're starting to see more uh, normal, um, you know, activity. Frankly, activity in this office has been very high, which is very encouraging. Um, also daunting at times, but very encouraging. So with uh, from small businesses to large businesses looking to expand again to expansion plans that have been put on the shelf that are now been reactivated. Um, so th those conversations are, are, are taking place. So it makes me say that part of our media mix before we're, we're you know, with Hartford Business Journal um, and the Fairfield County Business Journal and frankly, especially their digital channels um, I think it's it's worth revisiting since, frankly, we do have the funds for it, um, and we may just want to take a couple of um, you know a couple of runs at um, you know doing a, a few of those things. For example, um, the Hartford Business Journal reached out as, as as frankly as the Fairfield County Business Journal as well, you know, saying, "Tim, do you want to you know, want you want to reactivate your ad campaign?" And I was like, "Well, I don't want to reactivate the ad campaign the way it was, so let's let's try to do something different." Well, we're working on a um, an advertorial campaign with the Hartford Business Journal, um, where it would be a two-page spread. I had made no commitment, okay, so without talking to this group, but it would be a two-page spread. Uh, one page is going to be a story, all right, an advertorial story um, about why a particular company decided to locate in the town of Wallingford. Um, I have spoken to, I've taken the liberty of speaking to um, uh, Bruce Dwarak over at Hobson Monster, and Bruce has agreed to be interviewed um, for a story. Now, I make the distinction between advertorial and story. Um, so, this is an advertorial, it's not being written by a reporter, being written by a stringer. The difference is that we always have with a stringer, we, we have final editing uh, authority. Whereas, if a reporter writes something, you know, we don't have the authority to, to amend or adjust anything that's in that they write. So, um, and then there would be the story, so credible source, you know, testimonial from a business owner who, you know, made a significant investment in Wallingford, bought a business, bought a building, has invested millions into that building in terms of uh, not only its infrastructure, but equipment. Um, Anthony can speak to it more directly than I, um, but it, it just becomes that, that um, you know, testimonial as to why they relocated to Wallingford on, on an adjoining page, we would have an ad that talks about, you know, why Wallingford are winning in Wallingford now. And then take that and leverage that. That story then goes out on all of our social media channels. It goes on our website. It, it's just something that we would take and leverage across all of our other channels. So that's my thought. And I think we can, you know, we'll get, we could get something like that done for, you know, five, six hundred, seven hundred bucks, I think. I mean, really? So, yeah, I, I, I just wanted to, to float that out there and, and just so the big thing is, you know, are, are we ready? I think the timing is good. Um, are we ready to re-engage, you know, some of our uh, traditional media channels? Uh, and I would advocate that we do that, but I'll open it up. I think, I think we're on the cusp of that right now. If you listen to Jerome Powell last night, and I couldn't agree with him more, businesses are, are just hungry. People are hungry to get into businesses. And uh, and get back to the the way it was, as whatever that was. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think as soon as we can start that, that'd be great. It, do you have a si- similar idea down in Fairfield County also? Yeah, I would frankly um, may even leverage the same thing in the Fairfield County Business Journals because they're two solely distinct markets. And you know, to have a to have a credible source like you know um, Bruce Dwarak talk about hops and Monster, um and why they located Wallingford uh, to take and, and run that in Fairfield County, Westchester County, I think has got. Um, you know, I think that's I think it's great reach and it's speaking to an audience down there. And again, we can leverage it across all of our channels. So those are the types of messages I think that uh, would be beneficial. Are these are these stringers uh, associated with the, the papers or do we have somebody like Steve Knight do it for us? Uh, this will be a stringer that comes from the Harper Business Journal. I see. Committee, any questions regarding that? Because uh, I'd like to go forward if we can, at least have something for presentation to the total commission and let them know that we're doing. Any any questions or comments or thoughts, Patricia? I think those, I think those are great ideas. Um, I, I think it's a great idea to do that. The price and the fact that we can use it in so many other mediums, I think is excellent. Tim, the, uh, the question that I would make sure is um, with uh, Hartford Business Journal is that you can use it as a blog piece or a, uh, a content piece on the, uh, you know, on all, all of your social media platforms should be shareable, I guess. Good point. Yes, that, that's, so the, and that's, that's been done. So the way this evolved is, um, I got a call from the publisher of the Hartford Business Journal, and this was a couple of months ago. It's a fellow from New Jersey, new publisher. He knows of my background in media and asked to get together for a cup of coffee. So we did that. And he just wanted to ch- talk about, you know, the Hartford Business Journal, what role it plays in, 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 in for us, and then, um, you know, kind of pick my brain as a, as a next newspaper publisher. So we, we went through a bunch of things. And I, I said, you know, news is news. I mean, you, you've got to continue to report the news. You've got to be essential in terms of people's news appetite every single day, or they're, 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 they're just not going to read you. But at the same time, you, you've got to drive value differently to someone like myself. It's no longer just plop an ad on the page and run. I mean, you've got to give me something that's different, unique and different. If it's not unique and different, you know, I can get it anywhere. I mean, so what can what can we do that's different? And so I said, you know, what we've used in the past is, you know, the Economic Development Marketing Committee saying, this is why you had to come from, from uh, to Wallingford, which is is nothing wrong with that. that that's, that's, that's a good message platform. But the next message platform is, I want someone who's come to Wallingford telling you why they came as opposed to me just telling that you should. So that's how this thing has evolved. And because we're the first one to, to do it, if, if you approve, and it sounds like everybody's in favor, but um, you know, I kept saying, well, it depends on what you're gonna charge me to do it. And he keeps saying, don't worry, don't worry. I said, well, I feel like I'm buying a car. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I think it'll be a pretty reasonable number. So, I mean, when we were doing ads, it was only 800 bucks. So I can't imagine it would be, you know, pretty bad or less anyway, but so that's how it's evolved. So to your point, Anthony, the entire conversation was about, A, you've got to deliver me something different. I want the message coming from a different source, not just from the person who stands to benefit from it, but someone who's lived it. And, And then I need to take and leverage that across all my channels. So it becomes, it's not proprietary to the business journal. It's something that I'm buying. I'm, I'm buying this advertorial. And as, as a, so it's a matter of ownership, right? News stories, the ownership is pretty obvious. It's, it's not the person that you're writing about. But in this particular case, it becomes my property. So it becomes my property. I can do with it what I'd like. And, and they totally agree with that. So Good. I think it's a good idea. Have consensus on this, Tim. So let's run with it. Gary, are you still on? I'm not sure. Apparently not. Okay, let's run. With I'm it. still on. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, you have any thoughts, or uh, we're thinking of running with it? Do you have any ideas or thoughts? No, I, I just think any any exposure. I would agree with Tim's comment earlier with regard to hey, it's you know, okay, why did you locate here and going a little bit deeper on it and 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 getting into more details and exposing more companies. I, I think it gives us an opportunity to uh, to really highlight, you know, all the good things going on in Wallingford. I think we all kind of fall into the line. It's, oh, it's between New York and 
Boston and slow electric rates and, you know, exposure to, you know, educated employees. But, you know, I think people want to know more and more. Sounds like a plan. Let's run with it then, Tim. Okay, very good. Thank you for your support on that. And then lastly, I just want to give you an update. The um, uh, economic development marketing specialist position, that part-time position, um, uh, we've, we've put together the job description. I will say disappointedly that um, it was supposed to be posted last week. It still hasn't been posted. Um, but if you've kept up with the newspapers, you can see that our HR department is, is uh, extremely busy handling retirements and so forth. So I, I you know, I, I can't, they're the ones that post it. Um, I've got to get the, the, the final uh, work from them. So uh, I, I'm stopping just short of, you know, needling them on a daily basis saying, come on, come on, come on, let's get this thing up and, and post it. So uh, anyway, you'll see it uh, soon. I'd be extremely disappointed if it wasn't by the end of this week. I'm marginally disappointed it wasn't by the end of last. So um, there seems to be a retirement trend going on. <laughs> What's that, Gary? I said there seems to be a retirement trend going on in the town of Wallingford. It's it's enormous. It's, it's enormous. So um, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah. So, Mark, that's that's all I had for the meeting. Um, I have a question. What do we have? Uh, what time period do we have the students till? Is it May, June? Are the yeah, graduating soon? Yes, the end of May. The end of May. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And uh, uh, we should have discussion. I'm thinking we're planning on doing something similar with students, some of these or other students next year. Is is that in your thought process, Tim? I would say, yeah, we, we, we keep it going. Yeah. Okay. Then one of the things that we should talk about prior to getting those new students on is maybe have them start developing a marketing strategy something for a, a longer term. I mean, now our strategy was, let's get this social media up, let's get it running. Let's talk about the good things that Wallingford's had in the past, the, the as Gary just mentioned, the electric and the education and the location and all that. But we have to go deeper into a strategy. And I think we should, as a group, as a, a committee should talk about that, as a commission, we should talk about that and kind of give them a lead so they can actually develop a strategy for us. I'm not sure how you feel about that, but I think that may serve us well for the future. Absolutely. <clears throat> and I would submit, Mark, that uh, for the next meeting, I will put on the agenda, if it, if, uh, if it pleases the uh, committee, that we should be talking about succession planning. So we need to know, you know, come September, who's still on the team, Yep. right? Um, so why don't we talk about succession planning at our next meeting as well? And I think the best, time to be recruiting for September would be, um, you know, if not now, <laughs> right? uh, maybe may be too late, maybe I'll have a side conversation with David Tomczyk. You can see that we speak, you know, regularly between the meetings, right, between our official meetings, but um, for us to be start thinking about, um, you know, students that are going to drop off, we know Calum's dropping off, we know Sam's dropping off, right. Um, I think we're frankly, we're going to, we're going to lose a, a good portion of them. Um, but we can add, ask them to start, you know, finding or thinking about a replacement. So who do you recommend and how do you get the word out as to who would you know, effectively take your place? And we'll want to do some interviewing again, you yeah. know, that type of thing. So have you heard internally from the mayor when he's thinking of having people come back in for meetings? Any word on that at all? No. No. Okay. Also, I was wondering if you guys would be interested in having um, Callum evaluate our current uh, situation with our web company that we deal with. Um, if they're meeting our needs, if we need to look elsewhere, um, if you guys would even consider using him as our web developer when the contract is up or just someone else. I mean, obviously we've had a lot of stuff done to the site and work done that wasn't recommended to us from our current uh, situation with the web solutions. So I have, oh. you may know the answer to this, Patricia. Um, that is a um, somewhat custom language. It's not built in WordPress. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if if we were to pull it away, mm -hmm. um, are, are are we beholden to them in their unique language, or is it if someone who has experience in WordPress or a couple of other 
uh, languages to be able to go in and, and use and manipulate and um, build what we would need to have someone build. That's the part that I am unclear on. It depends what the language is. I know that uh, Web Solutions years ago was using Cold Fusion. You don't see Cold Fusion a lot. So, no, but it's, it's, it's a hybrid. It's, it's kind of like WordPress, but not exactly. I can actually get the name. I used to use them in our company and we don't use them anymore. Um, because people don't use it anymore, the programming? Well, no, no, no. I, I moved, I built a new site and didn't and chose not to use them. Um, okay. One of the reasons we didn't just do an overhaul of the current is because it was not in WordPress and I wanted something that was kind of universally uh, accessible to anyone. I can move the website to anybody I want, but if you are beholden to someone because it's in a certain language, I, I, I would have to go back and, and see if I can dig out what that language is. But that's, um, that's, that's another great reason why have Callum look it over and say, Hey, yeah, you know, I, I do think we should use them before he leaves. Um, at least to give us an overview of what we have, what we need, um, what we're not getting. I think, I think about this, but we, we should also remember this is not just the EDC website. Right. This, <laughs> this, this, <laughs> that's true. Website. Yeah. So that's, just really, be aware of it. I think you had a great. No, situation. no, you're absolutely right, Mark. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And I was, I was tunnel vision there, but um, maybe we do want to know for the overview of everything, just, just for the heck of it. It's a lot of money going out from the state, from the, from the town uh, for the website, but just to have that knowledge moving forward. No. Yeah, to your point, Patricia, I think the, the, the takeaway from Callum could be, you know, if, if you were designing this website, what functionality would it have that we don't have now? Mm -hmm. um, but to Mark's point, you know, we, we are one page, you know, in the entire yeah. website and um, okay. I really don't think we can, we can change it. So the vendor that we have is the vendor that we have. Okay. Uh, I have no idea what the Downs contract is with them. And frankly, it's not something I care to engage yeah. with. But, but that's a good point. That's a good point you brought up, Tim. What what usability do we have? Mm -hmm. Just our little section. How can our usability be easier? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to make a note of that and um, have a conversation with Callum. As I have to jump, I have another meeting in a couple of minutes. But uh, Thanks for good. attending. I appreciate it. Of course. Have a good day, everyone. Have a good day. Take care. That's, that's really all I had anyway, Mark, in this... Uh, you know, you you know, if, if, if I should just add this, this fellow, Anthony Lapia, that I mentioned from LinkedIn, yeah. you now he talked about, and we, we talked about the part-timer coming on and, um, you know, handling, um, you know, the, uh, the media mix side of the equation for us. And, and, you know, he had suggested that um, now he's not really familiar with the student marketing team concept. And depending on how that goes in September, um, he, he was saying that, and I, again, I want to get him in front of this whole committee because it's, I just, he, you need to hear it from him, but he was suggesting that, you know, with your part-timer and allocating some of your, your marketing dollars, you know, we get 29 grand a year, right? Allocating some of your mark and the part-timer is not coming out of that at all. Part, that part-timer is being funded by me reducing my hours. That's how that part-timer is being funded. So our, our labor costs stay flat. The, um, the uh, um, use some of the media dollars that we have to um, consult, get, get a company in here that, you know, we can take and, and hold to a standard of, of terms of, of reporting and challenging and keeping up with technologies. Um, it, it's, it's worth, it's worth hearing him talk about it. Um, so I'll, I'll just, we have to figure out a way uh, to get him in front of the team in the front of the committee in front of the team. He's willing, but I'll tell you, this guy manages minutes and he's saying, you know, he takes on his new role in early June. He says, once, once June comes, you've lost me. So if you want to try to get me for a little bit, I'll be happy to engage right now. He's, he says, you know, prior to COVID, he would, he was spent most all of his time traveling since COVID he's been working from home here in Wallingford. So he's got the time now, but once June hits and he starts his new role, global role, he's gone. So, um, June's coming up fast, so my suggestion is try to get him in front of us as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. I actually said to David Tomchik on a call last week, I would love to take and, and um, you know bring him to Quinnipiac. Let's get one of you know one of those a room that's big enough where people can socially distance, have him present live. And David said the university won't allow that. So 
Um, mm. And I started saying, well, maybe we can do it in, in council chambers. How does the community or the um, university feel about the students leaving the campus and coming here? Mm -hmm. That was problematic as well. So um, anyway, so it looks like this morning. A happy Monday. My God, I'd love to live with you. You're the most cheerful, happy way about you. I mean, that's so rare to find today. <laughs> that's Rosemary? Who is that? She's a lucky lady, but you're a lucky guy, too. That sounds like Rosemary. Rosemary. Yeah. <laughs> Rosemary, uh, you're not on mute. <laughs> but anyway, right. I'll work on trying to figure out how we can have him present to the to the group. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Um, well, did, Any uh, further from before the group? Any the house except the bedroom. Then we are adjourned. Thank you. Have a great day, guys. Uh, yeah, sure. You may want to get out now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, walk through. Uh,